Hi, welcome again and we'll just quickly look at some of the other aspects of our Ed puzzle. One of the easiest things, and I didn't go through before, was the whole idea of adding classes. So I'm back on my home page and with my content. And if I come across here and click on my classes, it takes me to what is an important page for us. Now it starts off with, I can go to each one of my classes and see what's going on in terms of assignments that are due, ones that don't have a date due. I might, I've allocated these ones without a date because they are ongoing tasks that they can revisit over and over again. And of course, it lists my students. Now you can, of course, with changing students, you can actually add or delete students as you see fit. Now, this is an important thing down here. If you want to add a new class, obviously you would click that and then take you through it. I tend to have all my classes and try to link it with Google Classroom. As I've said before, so I would simply import it from Google Classroom by clicking this. And that just brings it in all the time. Now, as students sign up at the start of the year, I come across to this one over here and as more and more students sign up to my Google Classroom because as you know you send them an invitation and then they say yes and then as your class builds you do this and it transfers their details across. Now I'll just click this again and transfer the details across. It tells me that I still only have 19 students and here is the name of my 19 students and their email accounts. All right, so that's one of the really, really good things you can do and you should do if you're setting up that way. These are very, very good to see what we've actually done. All right, and that is something you can work with. Now I'm gonna go back to the grade book now while I've got this open. If I go to the grade book, I can see what's going on. Now, as we can see here, I'm in my Year 9 class, Study Group 4, and I've got these options. Now, here are some things that are going with it. Obviously, some of my students have not completed the work they've been supposed to do. I can decide when I want to look at this. This is since the start of this calendar year. Let's say if I want to go back, I click on the date, and I can go all the way back to the start of the school year. And click on that. Let's say I think we started the 20th of August. Click on there and it's done. And that, whoops, August 20th, that should be fine. No. Silly email, I didn't take it up far enough. And click the save, don't click, click save. And that goes all the way through what they have and haven't done from the start of the year. All right, so we can see with it. Now the other interesting part is if we go into it, we can actually see individual tasks for individual students. If I come across here on the left, I can see what young Jocelyn's done. And I get a list of all these things that she has done. There are certain things that did not have questions, just asked them to do information, and there are other things. Now she's done quite a lot of things in here for me. Um, she hasn't visited some of the ones yet that are ongoing, or she's quite happy. I've put some ones in here about how to set up things. So there's sort of skills development. You'll notice the arrows across here, which of course take me to the next student, and that one's taken the preceding student. So very, very useful, and I hope this is helping. It's a very quick introduction, but I'm hoping it's helping.